Okay, hello everyone. All right, so this is actually a program um, from chapter three, uh, test scores and grade. So I'm going to be doing this program by using the J option pane. Now the first one was done using the scanner class. Well, I'm doing this because, well, this is actually the, the, the first program which was done, in the, done using the scanner class is actually my popular video. And it will be nice for all these people who are watching to be also see how it's done using the J option pane class. Um, also, some people have also asked uh, me to do certain programs, you know, that I did using this kind of class in J Option Pane, and vice versa. And so I'll be doing that, but I will I won't be doing it for all the all programs uh, because generally speaking, I sometimes have a have a good mix. I do program some programs in J Option Pane and some programs in this kind of so so through other videos you'd see some done in this kind of some done in J Option Pane. So so you know you'd see a, a nice you know variety of it. Anyway, having said that, like I said, I'll be doing it for some programs. I'll be doing it for both. Like I'll be doing both the scanner and the Jobson pane. Anyway, so let's start. Also, this is like I said, this program is the is the is the um, is the is my most most watched. So why not start with this? All right. So let's start. I'm going to go ahead and create the class. So, well, let's first go ahead and read the question. All right. So write a program that has variables to hold three test scores. The program should ask the user to enter three test scores and then assign the values entered to the variables. The program should display the average. <coughs> I'm sorry, my cough is still there. It's still still this hot chocolate that I've been drinking from school. That I don't know what's in that hot chocolate, but anyway. <laughs> the program should ask the user to enter three test scores and then assign the values entered to the variables. The program should display the average of the test scores and the letter grade that is assigned for the test score average. Use a grading scheme in the following table. In the following table, test score average and letter grade. So th these are the test scores, this test score ranges, and these are the letter grades we have to assign to each of them. <coughs> All right, so let's start. So I'm going to go ahead and create the class. I'm going to call it test scores and grade. And then I'll go ahead and create the main method. Type in still hasn't improved, by the way. <laughs> okay, so the program says we should um, ask the user to enter three test scores, right? So that means that we have to use one of Java's mechanism, one, one of Java's features for asking for user input. And we have a couple of options. We have the scanner class and we have the G option pane class. First program I use the scanner class, and this program, like I said, I'm going to be using the G option pane class. Now, the G option pane class is not available to us, you know, in this program. Once we're, when we're writing programs, it's not available to us. So we need to go ahead and import it first so we can have access to the class. So before I start anything, right at the very top, I'm going to import javax.swing. Dot J option pane. Capital J, capital O, capital P. This way. <coughs> so now with the J option pane, we don't have to create an object from it. We can just go ahead and use the methods in the J option pane class. So let's see what we have to do first. Write a program that has variables to hold three test scores. The program should ask the user to enter three test scores. So let's ask the users to enter the test scores, starting with the first. I'm going to use G the J option panes show input dialog to ask for you to ask for input so i'm going to do that j option pane dot show input dialog method now the show input dialog method okay j option pane show input dialog method it takes in um, um, an argument which is basically what is going to be displayed to the user it's a prompt it's like a question going to be displayed to the user so i'm going to ask the user to please enter the first score. Oops, my typing card. <laughs> All right, so <coughs> this is going to pop up some kind of dialog box w with a text box embedded in it. And it's going to allow the user or ask the user to please enter the first score. Now the user is going to go ahead and type in something. The J option pane's show input dialog me method is going to take whatever the user has typed 
and return it as a string. Now in this case, we are asking the user to enter a score. So they're going to enter a numerical value. Now even if they enter a numerical value, whatever the user types, by default, the G option pane's show input dialog method always returns a string. And so if it's returning a string, we need a place to store it. And so right above it, I'm going to go ahead and declare a string. I'm going to call it for now user input string, right? Because it's the input that the user is going to type for the user. I mean, sorry, input that the user is going to type, which is going to be a string. And so when the G option pane's show input dialog method is returning that string, we are going to store it in user input string because we have it now. So I'm going to store that value in user input string this way. But the thing is, <coughs> this will be what the user has typed. This will be the value, the score that the user has typed. And we need to kind of convert it to a number because we can't use a string in calculations. We need to find a way to convert it. So I'm going to use one of Java's wrapper classes. Okay, so in, in later chapters, we'll talk about um, Java's wrapper classes, but I'm going to use one of Java's wrapper classes to convert this value, in this case, to a double because we are dealing with a score. The score could be a floating point value. It could be 50.5, it could be 70.28, it, it could be a floating point value. So I'm going to convert it to a double. So I'm going to call double.pass double. <coughs> well, my top, my, let me just get some water right now. Sorry, apologize. Okay, and I also don't like editing my video, so I should have cut this part out of it. Anyway, so I'm calling double dot pass double. So what we are doing is we are passing something, uh, you know, to a double. And what are we passing to a double? We are passing what's stored in the user input string. Okay, so we are passing the you know the user input string to a double. Now, when you pass it to a double, it basically changes what's stored in the user input string. It changes what's stored in the user input string to a double. It changes it from a string to a double. And when it's done, it returns that value. It returns that double. So if it's returning that double, we need a place to store that too. And so I'm going to come up here and declare a double value. What's that double? What's what is what is that value going to that variable going to store? It's going to score the, store the score one. So I'm going to go ahead and call it. Um, first, I'm going to call it user first score. You can call it anything though. I'm going to call, I'm going to call it user user first score. <coughs> and when the double dot pass double is returning that value, that double value, I'm going to store it in user first score. So basically, we are going to use the same idea for the second score and the, th and the third score because we are, we are asking the user to enter three scores. All right, so user input string took the string. We converted it to a, a double and we stored it in user first score. I'm going to make a copy of this. And then I'm going to ask the user to enter the second score. So please enter the second score. Okay, so the show input dialog method is going to pop up some kind of uh, dialog box with a text box embedded in it. So the user is going to type in the second st score. The show input dialog method is going to return that score and store it in user input string. So it doesn't matter we are using the same variable. We are replacing what was stored in the user input string. It doesn't matter. Over here, we got the first score and we passed it into a double and we stored it here. So we don't care about what's here anymore. We are replacing it now with a second score as a string. And then we are taking that second score in the string, passing it to a double again, and then storing it in a variable. But this time, we are not going to store it in the user first score. This is going to be our second score. So we need another variable okay, that's going to store our, user, our, our second score. So I'm going to declare another double and call it user second score. We're going to do the same idea for the third score. But basically, once this is done passing the, the second score out from a string to a double, we need a place to store it. So I'm going to store that in user second score. OK, so the same idea for the third score. <coughs> Very quickly, I'm going to call a show input dialog method. I'm going to ask the user to enter the third score. 
the show input dialog method is going to pop up a dialog box with a text box embedded in it. The user is going to type in the third score. It's going to return that value. The show input dialog method is going to return that value as a string. We are replacing what's already stored in user input string because we we don't care about it anymore. We've used the second score. We've already passed it to the to the double the pass double method uh, method here. We've passed we've passed it here and we've passed the value to a double store and store and, and stored it in user second score. So we don't care about what's in user input string anymore. Now this time around we we are storing the third score as a string in here. We are passing. Okay, so I know I'm, I'm mixing the word parsing and passing. Okay, so we are passing as in passing an argument to the method pass double here. And pass double is parsing as in trying, trying to convert that value from a string to a double. That value is our third score. We don't want to store it in our user second score. We need a place to score, store our third score. So I'm going to come up here and declare another variable. Let's call it user third score. And then once it's once the pass double method is done converting the value stored here to a double, we're going to store it in user third score. This way. Okay. So now the program goes out to say that the program should display the average of the test scores and the letter grade that is assigned for the test score average. <coughs> so the next thing we need to do is find the average. And we know that when you want to find the average, the average is basically the sum of all the scores. Okay, the sum of all the scores, you know, the, the total of the, the sum of it, divided by how many scores there are. All right, so let's do that. We have our score stored in user first score, user second score, and user third score. So let's add them all up. So it's going to be user's first score plus user second score. I'm copying them. Plus user third score. All right. And then we need to divide all of it by three. If you try to do this, if you try to if you try to do this thinking that it will divide the sum of all the scores by three, it won't because in this in this in this form, um, in this uh, statement right here, um, it's going to go ahead and you know divide this first. It's going to take user third score divided by. It's going to do that first. Why? Because of the uh, the order of precedent. Uh, sorry, sorry, the order of operation. Okay, so d division takes more precedence than addition. So it's going to try and do this first. But we don't want that. We don't want to divide the third score by three and then add the result to user user second score and user first score. What we want is to get the sum of these three scores first before we divide by three. So if we want that to take precedence, then we will have to surround that. Okay, we would parentheses. So basically, it's going to first add all the scores, get the total, and then divide the total by three. I'm going to end with a semicolon. Now this will basically give us our average. And so if it gives us our average, we need a place to start. And so I'm going to come up here. And declare a variable that's going to store our average. Now, our average can be a double. Actually, it's going to be a double because if you're adding three double values, you're going to get a double. Okay, so I'm going to declare a double variable and I'm going to call it um, user average, something like that. <coughs> user average, and then user average is going to store the average after we're done cal calculating it. <coughs> 